my students so in this discussion we are going to discuss a concept called elasticity of demand we are still in first chapter we are discussing the demand and its elasticity now so let's understand today's objectives of the discussion so today we are going to first discuss elasticity as a concept and its types and then we are going to throw some light on its application and your learning outcome is you will be able to understand how this concept is used in business world so what is elasticity and its types now let's understand we have discussed earlier that demand is associated with the price price rises demand falls or price rises demand falls and price falls demand rises this is this relationship has a certain sensitivity so definition of elasticity is it is the responsiveness or the sensitivityness of this demand to the corresponding changes in price or corresponding changes in income of the consumers or corresponding changes to supply and sometimes price of other products as well so in first case when we will say price elasticity second case is called as a income elasticity and third case is called a, called as a cross elasticity so price elasticity is whenever a proportionate change in price leads change in demand maybe in different proportions maybe in same proportions is called as a price elasticity because we are using price against demand in next case is called as a income elasticity so proportionate change in the income of consumers leads to the proportionate or disproportionate change in demand of the products and the third under consideration is called as a cross elasticity here you can see the proportionate change in the price of a substitute good leads to the change in demand of original good for example mathematically we can say percentage change in demand of x right it is divided by percentage change in price of y we'll take the examples and probably it will become very clear to you how they are plotted in our earlier videos we have plotted the demand curve right we have plotted price on vertical axis and demand on horizontal axis the same concept is here so you can see types of elasticities so perfectly elastic perfectly inelastic relatively elastic relatively inelastic and unit elastic demand these are the types right you can see those types uh, look at my cursor right here is a chart which shows you various types of elasticities and their mathematical values right unit elastic demand it means proportionate change in price leads proportionate change in demand it means equal change in price leads equal change in demand price rises by 10% demand falls by 10% equal change elastic demand or take example of perfectly elastic demand i'll show you the line this blue horizontal line look at my cursor this blue horizontal line is an example of perfectly elastic demand where small change in price leads very big change in demand so if you increase the price by let's say 1 rupees 
डिमांड गोज डाउन ट्वेंटी परसेंट वेरी बिग चेंज इन डिमांड इट इज कॉल एज अ वेरी फ्लेक्सिबल डिमांड हाईली इलास्टिक डिमांड सो समाइम्स इट्स वैल्यू कीप्स राइजिंग राइट सो परफेक्टली इलास्टिक डिमांड मीन्स द डिमांड कर्व वुड बी परफेक्टली हॉरिजोंटल इट्स अ रेयर केस बट रिलेटिवली इलास्टिक डिमांड इज uh more often observed small change in price leads big change in demand there are certain products where it happens we'll discuss that very opposite to this is perfectly in elastic demand that's a vertical red line that you can see I'll again uh, take my cursor to it yes you can see this vertical red line it is perfectly inelastic it means demand is not elastic demand is rigid price changes by 10% 2% 5% whatever there is no change in demand demand is fixed demand is stable demand is plotted on horizontal axis and it goes nowhere it stays there perfectly inelastic demand right again that is a rare case right but this yellow line i'll take my cursor to it this yellow line is relatively in elastic demand is more often observed right price of petrol price of diesel price of electricity price of water if they keep rising you will you have to purchase probably you will just reduce the quantity but not in same proportion so if demand rises by 10% sorry if price rises by 10% demand falls by 2% all right again if price rises by 20% sudden hike demand falls by only 5% so these products are very essential products that you can say so their demand or their elasticity is relatively inelastic so we'll just go a little further we'll try to plot income elasticity so you can see the income is plotted on vertical axis and demand is on horizontal axis and based on its slope its value differs that is clearly shown here then next is called cross elasticity right again quantity of x product is shown on vertical axis while price of product y is shown on horizontal axis so we can take example of tea powder versus coffee powder right the quantity sold of tea powder will keep rising as long as prices of coffee powder will keep rising so naturally when coffee gets costlier and costlier demand for tea goes higher and higher they can be plotted on graph paper or they can be plotted on uh, using any computer software and we can study that and it happens with the products which are substitute products right and can be observed it's very interesting phenomena it can happen with the rivals brands where rise of one rises demand for other naturally goes up cross elasticity of demand so how the concept of elasticity is used in business that's our last objective point of discussion today so government uses this concept when they want to impose the tax on certain commodities right if demand is inelastic yes addition of taxes would not reduce the demand by large amount but if demand is highly elastic the slight increase in taxation can reduce the business reduce the demand so government doesn't want 
business businessmen to lose the demand but same time they want to revenue so they have to analyze they have to understand the elasticity of the product before taxes are imposed and where some products elasticity is relatively inelastic where government imposes some price controls price regulations or something like water supply where government controls water supply probably local government imagine if that can be privatized how much a private company can charge you for the water so government understand this based on the elasticities and then decide what what to control so sometimes prices are controlled sometimes they are you know driven by supply and demand forces of the market so government decides these things based on the elasticity that's the point another application of price elasticity is how the business world uses it so a mathematical model can be developed right and let's assume that you are selling a product at rupees 10 and for some reason you want to hike its price to 12 rupees so what would happen to the demand how much demand would you lose can be calculated in advance with some fair accuracy and this result is valid in short term probably for a few weeks right not for years together because you know determinants of demand keeps changing that's why whatever the calculation predictions we are making based on the mathematical model the formula of elasticity of demand is probably hold true for only next few days or weeks but again it's not 100 percent accurate one should not rely on that 100 percent it is just a guideline it gives a sense of probably direction what will happen to the demand right but one must uh, use this concept scientifically it gives at least a sense of direction which way the demand would go precise calculations and precise prediction is not possible but at least you got something in your hand to predict or at least to have a judgment of it right so i repeat again 100 percent accuracy is not possible then finally using the concept of cross elasticity you can have a judgment a idea that if let's take example if you are a shopkeeper and prices of coffee they are rising more and more so naturally you know that demand for tea powder would go up so you would invest more money in tea powder you will store more tea powder and naturally its demand would go up so economics helps you to make such decisions we can go into more details using mathematics probably again 100 percent accuracy is not possible because you know things are dynamic things can change very fast but at least uh, it can make sense at least to give us a guideline what would happen so there are more app many applications but at your level just to keep it simple I think these applications of elasticity they are enough so we'll stop here thank you very much and in the next video we will check the details of law of supply thank you